The Avani Resort in Quinh Nhan, Vietnam is blessed with a spectacular beach and it might end up on your shortlist for your next holiday. Find out why, coming up. The Avani originally opened in 2003, south of what is still a relatively unknown beach town in Vietnam, Quy Nhon. The coastline might be long, but most of Vietnam's well-known beach resorts are in Da Nang, Nha Trang, or Phu Hoc. Nestled smack in the center of the country though, we have Quy Nhon in Binh Dinh province, famous for its ruggedly beautiful coastline. Queen Yun's Phuket Airport is northwest of the city center, making for an hour and 20 minute drive south to Bai Dai Beach on the edge of Binh Dinh Province. The Avani is located next to its sister property, the newer Anantara Resort, which we'll also take a look at in this video. Avani and Anantara share an entrance, which then splits into two separate reception areas. Originally built in 2003, with its most recent renovation in 2012, the Avani was way, way ahead of its time. 18 years later, Quinyan is still unknown to most of the world, and I can only imagine how small of a town it used to be back in 2003, with Vietnam just welcoming a small fraction of the foreign visitors that it's seen in recent years, before COVID. The entrance and reception area are open air and immediately invite you in with a peek at the beautiful view of the sea. Avani is a small hotel chain with a mantra that focuses on a slightly younger crowd and tries to find a balance between style and function with a laid back service style. They currently operate 37 hotels with a further 11 in development, almost half of which will be in Vietnam. Avani, along with Anantara, is part of the minor hotels group, which is currently in the process of merging with the much larger NH Hotel Group. Somewhat awkwardly placed in the lobby, you'll find a small sundry shop, which then leads into the primary restaurant for the resort, Trey. Most of the public areas are in a modern and fresh Indochine style. The rooms though follow a bit of a different design language which we'll see coming up. Close your eyes. Leading out from the lobby, you'll immediately notice how well kept the resort grounds are and of course the color of the sea. In this part of Vietnam, the water is typically somewhere between turquoise and jade in color most of the year. The rainy season is relatively short, but intense, from September until December, when the waters will be a little bit murkier. The temperatures will also likely be chillier than you're expecting from November until March, with lows frequently dipping below 70 Fahrenheit or 21 Celsius. And now we have my favorite part of this 63 room resort, the massive beach. End to end, if you're looking at the beaches of Ivani and Anantara combined, it's almost 700 meters long. That's nearly half a mile for two small resorts with a combined room count under 100. Note the reason I keep speaking of Anantara is during COVID, the facilities were shared. The properties are connected on the beach and there's another pathway to walk between the two. During my stay, the restaurant at Avani was open for dinner and everyone had breakfast at Anantara. 
check out the situation before you book if this is something that appeals to you, as I'm not sure it's going to last forever. The buildings with the hotel rooms are three stories high and spill out directly onto the beach. There were always some loungers set out, but there were so many small nooks along the beach that guests tended to find their own private spot for sunbathing or swimming. The Golden Sand beaches were truly exceptionally clean and not subject to extreme water level changes as the tide came in or went out. One thing I need to point out is, I stayed here in January of 2021. This being just the sixth resort I filmed for a review. Going into my stay here, I made a mistake with my expectations. It's not that they were too high or too low, they were just incorrect. Because of that, I decided to sit on this review for a while. Wait until I saw some other resorts in what I considered to be the same category before I put together the video. I never thought that would be almost a year later, but I'm glad I waited and I think the review will be better for it. The Avani is an 18 year old property. For a resort in Vietnam, that's like ancient. But through the years, Avani has in fact kept its charm and they've done a very good job of maintaining the grounds and the facilities. The resort's swimming pool is a decent size, perched to overlook the beach below. There were always loungers set up with towels and the maintenance staff were cleaning it along with the hot tub and the reflecting pool every morning and evening. In general, I'd say the cleanliness at Avani was well above average during my stay. Just next door is the pool bar, which you will surely find yourself in at some point, since you need to kinda walk through it to get to all the rooms. Drink prices and food prices for that matter were reasonable and definitely on the lower side of the scale for resort prices. Now onto the room which is accessed from these outdoor corridors. I booked a deluxe studio, but I was upgraded to a junior ocean suite which is a bit larger, a perk of Hotels.com Gold. The smaller studios are located at a level above this and while they are a bit smaller, they have vaulted ceilings and slightly more private balconies, so I think either one is just fine. The room is open, bright, and in great condition for its age. Behind the king size bed is a working desk along with ample closet space. Close your eyes. 
The minibar area is stocked with a small selection of snacks and an espresso-esque machine with pods provided from a local Vietnamese coffee company. If I could change one small thing, I'd upgrade the water on offer. But overall, the amenities are what you'd expect. In front of the bed is the living area with a full-size seating area. The smaller studio rooms only feature one chair in this area. Behind the colorful curtain is a nicely sized bathroom featuring a double basin vanity, Malin and Getz products, and a rainfall shower with a beautiful view. The balcony had fantastic views, but was not as private as I would have preferred. That said though, it was perfectly comfortable to relax out here and enjoy a bit of room service, which was better than expected also. A few hours later, we were off to Trey Restaurant, which features an impressive mix of cuisines from around the ASEAN nations. Essentially, they had a handful of dishes representing each country and managed to pull off everything really well. I had a Singaporean style laksa and a Khmer style beef curry. The next morning, we go for a short stroll along the beach and head to the Anantara Resort. The Anantara features a gorgeous beach with fewer rocks for just about as far as you can see. Breakfast was served at Sea Fire Salt, a small restaurant overlooking the pool. The service was semi a la carte. Quite a few items such as fruit, yogurts, and local dumplings and rice cakes were served to each table automatically. And then you also order your main dish off of the menu. And then there was a nice buffet with more hot dishes, bread, salads, and cold cuts. I will say, I didn't quite understand that so many items would be served automatically which is why you'll see far more food than necessary on my table. But it was all well cooked and one of the better quality breakfasts that I've had in Vietnam this year.
And now you see what I mean. And before we get to the flip-flop score, let's take a quick overview of the Anantara's resort areas. In front of the open-air reception is a very neat and tidy lawn leading to the resort's pool, which overlooks the beach with the restaurant on the left. At the time of my booking, the prices for the villas at Anantara just seemed unnaturally high, which is why I stuck with the Ivani, which, especially with access to the Anantara, is a great value. And now we have the flip-flop score. The room is large, bright, and well laid out. And even nine years after its last renovation, is still in great condition. Nines for both. The service was okay, but there were a few mix-ups with my reservation, and communication before my arrival was not great. Seven out of 10. The common areas, with the exception of the sundry shop, were well laid out with an eight, and the grounds of the resort were really well kept and manicured, a solid nine. Cleanliness, as I mentioned before, was a standout at a 10. The F&B venues were nicely designed, but nothing spectacular at an 8 out of 10. The food quality and the amenities, especially with access to the Anantara, were above my expectations, with both at a 9 out of 10. And finally, that beach. That's the easiest 10 out of 10 I've given in a while. Overall, a solid 88 out of 100. Queen Yun probably isn't the first place I'd visit in Vietnam, but if you've seen a lot of the country already, Binh Dinh Province has a lot of local culture and natural beauty to offer, and I'd happily recommend the Avani Queen Yun. Thanks for watching, please subscribe, and see you in a few days with another video.